Welcome, everyone, to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Thank you so much for listening. We have our periodic visit from Andrew Marchand of the New York Post to go through a bunch of sports media news. Al Michaels, John Morosi, the NBA in-season tournament, a bunch of other topics with Marchand. And then Sal Akata joins me for our weekly Train of Thoughts segment. Before we get to it, just let me remind you, if you've missed any recent episodes of SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, to go into the archives, check them out, download, subscribe, rate, and review. Two podcasts came out last week uh, for the WWE fans out there. We had Seth Rollins, who said a lot of uh, crazy stuff about CM Punk. They got a lot of pickup and some things about Roman Reigns, so check that out. Boger McFarlane from ESPN, Mike Tirico, Ian Eagle, all recent guests in recent weeks right here on SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. So listen to those pods if you did not. Subscribe and leave a review on Apple. All right, let's get to uh, this week's show. Andrew Marshan of the New York Post on all the latest sports media news, followed by Sal Akata and Train of Thoughts, all right here, right now, on SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. All right, joining me now for his periodic visit to the SI Media podcast, host of his own podcast, the Marshan and Oran podcast, and of course, columnist, reporter for the New York Post, Andrew Marshan. Andrew, how are we doing? Doing pretty well. How you doing, Jimmy? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Trying to get to the end of the year here, which would be nice. So slog through these last few pods. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, um, all right, let's start with you broke the news on Tuesday that Al Michaels was not going to be calling a playoff game this season for NBC. A couple of things just for clarification purposes. I, I've seen some people interpret it as you you I know Al didn't give you a comment, but when you called Al, you were breaking the news to him. It, but that's not what happened, right? Like it wasn't that older. Yeah, so, so here's the chronology, okay. chronological yeah, yeah. order of yeah. what happened. Uh in November, early November, I wrote a column about Al where I talked to him about his thoughts about retirement. Um, and then, you know, kind of what I thought would be the best course of action. We discussed that. I wrote a column. During that interview, I also asked him about the NBC playoff game, which I'd heard was in limbo um, and that it was trending towards him not doing it. And at that point, he said he hadn't heard anything about it. And his initial response to my question was, do you mean who I'm going to work with? Uh, so then I didn't write about it because Al is a great play-by-player, -play, maybe the best ever. But he also is very fierce uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and so, you know, he he can get things maybe changed. Um, and so I didn't want to put it out there that this might happen um, because, you know, I thought there was a chance that Al might be able to uh, to get the powers that be to change what looked like was going to be their move to the top college team at NBC of Noah Eagle and Todd Blackledge. Okay, so why do you think NBC decided to not use Al this season? A couple of things. Number one, at the end of the relationship, the full-time relationship between NBC and Al, it wasn't great. Um, you know, they, you know, they liked, of course, Al Michaels' work, um, but they did bring in Mike Tirico a few years ago uh, to be the number one to succeed Bob Costas on the Olympics and then Al Michaels on Sunday Night Football. Uh, and so uh, they, you know, there's a switch with the Super Bowl with CBS. So which meant that uh, Al was going to be one more year that Tariko was going to have to uh, wait. Um, and they did that. And uh, but Al was still very persistent. Uh, behind the scenes, you know, trying to still maintain his job as the number one uh, play by player with his buddy Chris Collinsworth. Uh, and they moved on to Tariko. They announced this Emirates ro or role. I can't say Emirates. How do you say Emirates? I don't know. It's Emeritus. 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 Yes. I say it wrong every time. Emeritus. It kind of the real the word for it is bullshit. That's what it is. I mean. Well, that's where we're getting to. So they never, I remember <laughs> asking Al, asking them, like, what does that mean? Um, and nobody could define it. I know Al's mentioned maybe like he pop up on some golf events, which seem kind of implausible just because first off, he hasn't covered golf in forever. And like, as opposed to like Costas, who sort of, um, 
is a little more opinionated over the years and kind of can give commentary. I mean, Al has opinions, of course, he's a lot of opinions about a lot of things, but he hasn't really done that as much publicly um, in terms of events. So that seemed implausible. And then he did do the playoff game last year, Jacksonville and the Chargers. Great comeback. Al was panned, you know, on social media and then also by people who aren't on social media because it um, there was a perceived lack of enthusiasm on that call. He, he would argue that he just did the regular call. I think one thing that you always have to, and I think there's a problem with, with him and Herb Street, is that, you know, if you have a low-key analyst, in that case it was Tony Dungy, then the play-by-play guy's job is to maybe raise their level somewhat to kind of get that yin and yang. Um, you know, it doesn't have to. I mean, it's Al Michaels. He's not going to totally change. He's not going to become Gus Johnson or Kevin Harlan, but you sometimes have to do that. And I think if you look at, if you go and like review that last call when the Jaguars kicked the game-winning field goal, um, it wasn't Al's best. Um, and so I think that that factored in as well. And it was time. So um, in, at least in NBC's eyes. And so that's why uh, he's not doing that game. Well, uh, here's what I find curious about that. Because I, I, I did want to know how much the backlash to the game that Al called with Tony Dungy was a factor in all this. And I, I thought Dungy got panned more than Al for that telecast. And I also thought it was unfair to Al to let him have to do the game with Dungy, who he's never worked with before. And then Dungy was brutal. What's interesting though, is I, I don't know about you. I'd be curious for your take on this. I have not seen a broadcast team in the last few years get destroyed more than Jack Collinsworth and Jason Garrett, who, who do Notre Dame for NBC. And NBC didn't bother making a change with them, which I find interesting. But Al, they're taking away one playoff game that he gets to call a year after, you know, being an NFL broadcaster for 50 years. I'm I'm a little surprised they wouldn't give Al the game with a different analyst and, and Paul Dungy. What do, you, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I think Al, you know, he didn't return my call or text the other day. I mean, he might say, like, I didn't want to work with... Uh, um, another analyst that I tried that, you know, Herb Street's not available. You know, his deal allows him, his ESPN deal allows him to do Amazon, but not NBC. Um, and so I guess that could be a factor, but, but ultimately, uh, you know, I, here's the thing about it. Al Michaels, I've written this, said it, um, he's probably the best TV play by play, uh, guy on the NFL of all time. I mean, probably put Summerall up there with them, you know, Ray Scott's like before our time. Uh, so I don't know where he stands and, you know, good again, obviously it's all personal preference, but you know, not that this is really the way to grade broadcasters, you know, Al and Summerall did the most Super Bowls 11 each. Um, and so, you know, you, you could argue Al's the best ever. That said, if you stay around forever, then usually they ask you to leave eventually. So right. um, this is the normal process of how things go go i always use the analogy baseball analogy uh, for my days covering uh your favorite team the yankees uh you know first they move you down the lineup you know then they platoon you then you're on the bench then you get cut that's generally how things go um and so you know he moved down the lineup from sunday night football to amazon then he did the one game um, you know, with NBC and now he's been moved off that one game. Um, and so that's generally how it goes. If you don't decide to, to, to leave at a certain point. And, and let me put it, I think Al would be at his, would be the smartest to say, I'm going to do this year, next year, get a retirement tour, take the pressure off anybody saying that he's slipping at all. Um, you know, I think that's, but I want to just emphasize it's his life. So he should do what he thinks he's getting paid a lot of money. Uh, it's only half the year. It's only one game. He flies private. It's pretty good. So if he likes to do it still and they're willing and then Amazon still wants him, then he should do it. But um, but I do think you want to be – I've seen this before. I don't think it takes a U-turn generally. And um, I, I think you, if you if you care about it, maybe he doesn't, but if you care about what the public is saying and how you're looked upon, then I think it's better to be ahead of the game, be a year early as opposed to a year late. You know, I actually think Al and Blackledge would have been a good team for the playoff game because I think Blackledge got has good energy that would have fit with Al. He would have been a billion times better than Dungey. And like I said, I think it's it's a bizarre to me that NBC is going to pull him from one playoff game 
when they have a broadcast team that's probably the most pan broadcast team working in all of sports right now in Collinsworth and Garrett. That's weird. The other thing I would say is this. But they're not doing the game. No, I understand that. But yeah. if NBC is going to just make decisions based on broadcast booths that are getting destroyed, no one's getting destroyed more than that booth, of the Notre Dame booth. Yeah, like I, mean, I would. They rolled them out a second year in a row, and they and they didn't get any better. I would rent not buying on that booth. Yeah, you know what and I mean. The like, last I think thing I would say, there. yeah, the last thing I would say about this is, if I was Amazon, I'd be careful because Al's getting them a lot of publicity every Thursday, every Thursday night, Friday morning. I mean, he's getting covered by the blogs. In a, I mean, every site, your the Post, SI included are doing like two, three, four posts off of like what Al's saying during these games. It's if, you know, if I was Amazon, I'd be careful being in a rush to make a change. Yeah, we disagree on some of this stuff with this. I know you've been a yeah. big proponent of when he was kind of ripping on the games. I think a little that a little bit of that is okay. He hasn't done it as much this year, but I think a little bit of that is okay. I don't think really that's the job. You know, Al's been used to doing the number one game of the week for, you know, three, four decades. Um, when you have a B or C or D level game, I don't think it's your job necessarily well, to judge it. Let me just finish. Not to judge it because we're all choosing to watch it. Right, but he's not going in saying, oh, this is a bad matchup. I'm going to rip it. It's when the game's 6-3 with four minutes left in the third quarter and there's been no offense and the teams are embarrassing him themselves that he'll then say, you know, this is a pick. Maybe, but I guess uh, I think there's a perception that Amazon's schedule is not good. And this year it's been much better. Well, and the rating's so, been better. So when Al has I, to I call... Guess, I guess my point is that, like, yes... I mean, look, his, I like his acerbic for me personally. I don't know if that's the right. job. Like, I find it kind of funny, but right. it's not like, is the game good enough for Al Michaels? That's not, well, I get it. That's not really but, where it should be. We, I think we're arguing two different things. My point is right. this. Thursday night is an unwatchable game that nobody has to watch for any reason whatsoever with the Raiders and Chargers. Nothing from that game is going to get coverage. Nothing's going to get pickup. But there's going to be like a million posts about what Al says during the game. Yeah, that's good for Amazon. Not bad. That's yeah. how I look at it. So let me ask you, we'll go. I'm going to change topics. But, you know, you, you, you made the point that you don't think the guy should be ripping on the games. What did you make? Because I wrote about this. Um, yes, Tuesday. And I got a lot of play. What did you make of Troy Aikman on Monday Night Football? Just taking dead aim at the refs and that's saying fine. that. Yeah. Okay. No, I read that. I, I Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and good, right? You want people who are opinionated about officiating, about the game going on. Well, it's good and bad. It's good. I think it's good. Don't get me wrong. But the NBA complained to ESPN about Van Gundy, and he ended up getting whacked. Do I think Troy's going to get whacked? No. But the NFL is way more sensitive, way more controlling, and way more bitchy than the NBA. You know someone from the NFL called someone at ESPN. There is no doubt. I mean, that would be a, what you just present, I think it'd be a big, a good contest to, to figure out which one, um, you know, was more complaining, et cetera, and, and heavy handed NBA or NFL probably would go NFL. I'll probably give you the NFL. Eh, it's close. There's some people it's close, but yeah, the NFL definitely will make their thoughts known. I can't imagine they yeah. won't. They don't care that Troy can make an $18 million or whatever. Uh, they're not shy. Um, and yeah, I, it it you you don't necessarily want to be on the on the wrong side of the league, but that said, Troy Aikman's in the second year of a five year deal. I mean, I don't know exactly what's going to happen to him, and it only helps him. Like this move has worked out well uh, for Aikman, you know. Regardless, you know, of course, the money. But you know, if it was Al and Troy, I'm not sure if that would have worked as well as Joe and Troy. Um, and so, oh, without uh, a doubt. Yeah, and so I, I mean, it's a com it's the most comfortable listen of the top teams, um, yeah. and so that's important, and that's kind of what you're looking like. Again, I hate saying it because it's so like negative, but the first rule you want for any broadcast is not to be annoying, and that's number. That's one. what I told Tariko when he was on two weeks ago yeah. with the Taylor Swift stuff. Yeah, you don't want to be annoying about it. You don't want to be right. annoying. You don't don't get in my way if I'm sitting next to you. If you're kind of 
you know, mundane a little bit and not great, fine. But if you're in the way and constantly um, just too much, then yeah. uh, that's a problem. It's exactly, yeah. When Tariko was on a couple of weeks ago, he he commented about me ripping NBC for their coverage of Taylor Swift when they had a game. And I was like, listen, it, you know, people want to get into the, you know, oh, well, she was only shown this many times. And I'm like, it got annoying. That, that I don't give, I don't care about the number. It got opinion? annoying. It got annoying. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I get paid to write my opinion. No, so. no, I'm not saying you're not entitled to it or you're not correct. Right. I'm just saying it's your right. opinion, though. CBS was pushing it on Sunday during Bills. They put they they got caught in one embarrassing moment on the play of the game when Kelsey had the lateral to Tony. Before they address the flag, boom, they got to show her. Relax. Calm down. She's not going anywhere. She's stuck in the suite. You can show her anytime you want. Get the play first. That's and I'll give point. Nance credit. One thing that was lost in that, Nance at the snap said there's a flag. So, which I thought was, you know, he got, he was on top of that. I mean, they didn't know, they didn't know it was going to be for offsides, but at least I actually, he said. Yeah, Nance, that is good. Nance did that. I will say just your yeah. overall, because I know you give Joe Buck a lot of credit for no flags. I just want to, I haven't yeah. said this on our podcast. So I've been meaning to address this. I am not with you on the no flags thing. Okay. Because you don't have to tell me there's no flags if there's no flags. Like, I'm not saying not all, sometimes it's okay, but you've oh, got so now. You're, because you're not, you, because you're you not a gambler. Me. You're not a gambler. You're not a gambler. You don't know what that feeling is like when the guy runs a punt. 80 yards for a touchdown, you're celebrating, you think you're covering, and then all of a sudden they go, wait, 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 there's a flag back at the 20. No, you're missing what Fuck I'm saying. Fuck you. Well, first off, you haven't said that, I don't think. Number one. Of course I've said that. No, that you gamble. You didn't put the flags thing with the gambling. So wait, even wait, take out the gambling. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me you don't, you don't have a problem when a guy scores a touchdown and then five minutes later the announcer tells you there's a flag? You're totally missing what I'm saying. Okay, I'm not saying quiet. if there is a flag, I want to know there's a flag. But there, if there's no flags, there's a little. They put the little yellow thing on. They put the flag on. Oh, the screen. that thing goes up late half the time. And then also, but but here's the thing. I'm just saying, like, I'm not. Of course, if there is a flag, you want like Nance said the flag at the at the at the uh, start of the play. Yeah, that's good, right? Because there is a flag. But if there's no flags, I don't need no flags on every call. It ruins every call if you're just saying no flags. No, you need no, you need it. No, no, not on every call. On punt returns and kick returns, because on every punt return and kick return, there's a flag. Got it. I mean, we, every we punt return in the NFL, there's a but flag. If you don't say so there's when there's a no flag, flag, then there's no flag. Now, if you're saying, do I agree with you? Hold on a second. Do I agree with you that if you miss the fact that there's a flag, is that bad? Yes. So if there is a flag and you don't tell me there's a flag, that's bad. But you don't need to tell me there's no flags. You do you need to tell me there were here's flags. A, here's what here's what here's what no here's what I need why I need them to say no flag. It's when they say no flag, that's when I know I can celebrate. I can't celebrate till I know there's no flag. I'm interested in like broadcasting, okay? That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> we're arguing basically the same thing. I'm just saying you don't have to just say no flags. If you didn't say there's a flag, like if you don't, I, the omission is, is saying there's no flags. I don't need, we're you not, to a, we're not flag. agreeing. We're not agreeing. When there is a kickoff, a punt return touchdown, I need the announcer to say no flags when the guy hits the end zone, because it half the time it'll come out seconds later and I'm celebrating. And then I'm deflated when the flag comes. I want to know no flags. You're not a gambler. The people who are listening will go on Twitter and they'll tell us who's right and don't worry about it. it, will, but, it that, but, but we're not, just as long as you present it correctly. Let me just, for my people. I'm not presenting it anyway. They could just listen to this. I'm not going to tweet it. They okay. could just listen to it. I'm just saying it. that if you don't, if the announcer doesn't say there's a flag, then there's no flags. I don't even tell me there's no flags. They're hard to tell me You're missing no the point. Do you know how many times there's a punt return touchdown and there's no yellow thing? And then all of a sudden the announcer goes, oh, wait, wait, there's a flag. Yeah. After the team's already celebrating and dancing in the end zone. Don't let it get that far. Tell me there's no flag right off the bat. Then I know I can celebrate. But your, your example is not, I'm going to let it go. Cause I mean, I want people yeah. to listen to your podcast, but your example <laughs> doesn't make any sense though, because what you're saying is the announcer doesn't, uh, there doesn't notice there's a flag. Yeah. Uh, then right. A lot of times then I pay attention and they go, Oh, oh there is a flag. Well, you should have told me that as soon as it was dropped. I want as soon as it's dropped, you got to let me know. And then That's if it's fine. not dropped, but if you don't, but if you don't right, say but then there's you, no right, 
when the guy the hits the end zone, you got to no confirm flag. it. They don't say there's no flag. They don't no. have to tell me there's no flag if they didn't say there was a flag. It's not tell confirm. Confirm for me there's no flag when the guy hits the end zone. Confirm it. It's confirmation. You know what? There's more going to be a lot of alt cast. Uh, People just have a gambling. Just at every play, they'll say flag, no flag. That'll be the whole job. Just punt returns and kick returns since there's flags on every one of those plays. All right. All right. I thought, I did not think that would be the topic we would argue about. I, I thought this would now be the topic we would argue about. And I know I'm going to get so much shit for this and no one's going to agree with me. Right. But I'm just no, going to say I like this. my chances here. No, no, you're going to bury me. I got train already on this one. You're going to bury me, and I know I'm out on an island on this one. But I'm going to try to explain myself so people understand it. But Okay, John Morosi screwed up. Yeah, there's no. He said Otani was flying to Toronto, and he was not. He was in California, and Morosi messed up. Okay. The reaction to Morosi messing up was a million times worse than Morosi. People... People, this is a black eye for journalism. What Charlie Steiner, you have to hear it. He went on Russo yesterday and spent five minutes just lamenting the death of like journalism. Here's what I would say about this. Morosi was wrong. He did a bad job. He said a baseball player was going to sign with one team and then the player signed with another. It's not the end of the, we can relax a little bit. It's not that big of a, like the reaction was, all, all these people coming out of the woodwork who obviously have never reported it. Like every single person has gotten stuff wrong. And, but everyone was ready to bury Morosi. Is there any reporter who never got anything wrong? I, I'm still waiting for Condoleezza Rice to coach the Browns. Like Adam Schefter said, John Heyman said, Aaron judge was signing with the, judge. everyone does this, but the way they came down to Morosi was ridiculous. Okay. Two things. Number one, I think, we this is like a bigger issue and bigger than sports we we live in secondhand reality which is that we're on our phones on our screen so this is not firsthand reality and everything is beaten over our head so we know about every incident of any we know everyone's thought either um you know if they have any background in the an issue or if they don't so i do think that what you're talking about a little bit is the fact that you're on Twitter for this stuff and or X and you're getting people just hammering Morosi now. Well, I've seen uh, it. This is what more no, than no, Twitter. Like a, yeah, Bob Nightingale wrote a column just like right. crushing baseball writers. That's on, my, so, on our podcast. I said I disagree with Bob. I don't. So Charlie I, Steiner, Charlie Steiner on Russo cited the Nightingale column and how great it was and how good it was and this and that. And I'm like, OK, well, here's ahead. the Sorry. thing. All right. So, yeah. I'm going to defend baseball writers. Like, to, yeah. all right, there's a couple. Of them. We'll get to Morosi in a second, but most of the baseball writers didn't report this. And what you have to understand when a guy That's like John true. Morosi, who's an insider for MLB Network and I think MLB.com, um, he, you know, he has some credibility. So when he says that, everyone's hearing from their editors, they're hearing from their bosses and saying, what, what's going on? What's going on? Especially with that situation. And that's difficult. I had a, when I was at ESPN once, um, the Daily News reported that um, Robinson Cano, there was like a big blow up with Seattle. And he wasn't going to sign with them. And like it was like eight o'clock in the morning. That's when you'll know this the national audience. Well, Cashman always jumps off or climbs down a building for charity in Stanford, Connecticut. So I'm there. It's eight in the morning. This story's breaking. Cashman's coming down the scaffolding. And you're waiting to talk to Cashman. I'm making calls. And I remember calling up to Bristol and saying, look, I don't think this is true. The reporter in question um, has been wrong before. And I don't think we should go with this. Uh, they wanted me to go on Sports Center talk about it. I go, look, I'll go on. But I'm going to say, according to them, and we have no confirmation. And then it ended up not being true. And I remember I got a nice note from one of the editors saying, you know, great job there. And so you have to understand, though, there's pressure, though, because you're in competition. There's a huge story. At that point, Cano was the biggest free agent. Uh, Willie signed with Seattle. Jay-Z was involved as his agent. It was a great story, especially how the Daily News, you know, had written it. Um, it was wrong. Uh, so the... The, so the overall, what, what you know, with Morosi, the, the issue I had with Morosi is this. If you have that tidbit of information, okay, let's say it were true. I mean, it's awful that it wasn't true. But let's say it were true. You don't just give that to the masses with no context. You have that little piece of information. And in theory, 
you're at like the 10 yard line going in for a huge touchdown and you don't know. And I get it's competitive. You want to be first, but that's time when you need to slow down a little bit um, because you just need to fight. We need, we need to know what the context of it. So he could have, he could have, he, look, he did say it was uh, imminent and he said either today or, you know, tomorrow, which, you know, doesn't mean anything at the end of the winter meetings. You figure Otani is probably ready to make a decision. So it's not exactly like he was going on a limb. It wasn't like the day after the season, he's going to make a decision. That said, he did say that. Um, and then secondly, though, you got to give me the context of it. There's no story like, you know, you just there's a lot of stories. I don't want like, to get into where I have the story of what's like the this person's out. But I know there's like I know the context, but I need to prove it because that's the that's what's you got to tell people. That's what makes it interesting. Um, and so that's where Morosi made a huge mistake. Um, and so and then like, you know, Bob Nightingale, who I like and, you know, respect. Um, but I don't know the way he wrote his column as if like every baseball writer is beholden to agents and just sitting by their phone waiting for the I mean. Yeah, that's like, I mean, you get that in like what I, what we cover, you know, where people are like, oh, this person tells you and like, they're always 90% of the time people are wrong. Um, and I just don't know. That's not how stories like it's not. Yeah. Can that ever happen that someone tells you something and then boom, of course that can happen, but more it's you find out stuff and then you're able to confirm and prove it. Then you're just sitting around. So, um, uh, so I thought his column was way off. Yeah. I thought the best twist, though, on the entire story was like all of these writers chomping at the bit to break the story. Morosi's out there getting things wrong. And then Otani broke it himself on his Instagram page. Well, he it was it seems, you know, I don't cover baseball anymore, told all the teams to be quiet. I mean, we had the thing with Dave Roberts um, where, you know, he said something at the Dodgers. Uh, right press conf, you know, where he does, they, they have the managers available, you know, every manager available at some point during the winter meetings. And he said they met with him and it's just like, Oh my God, are the Dodgers out now? Uh, and so, uh, you know, obviously it seemed like a strict order from, uh, Otani and his agents. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's why that happens. I mean, they can put a lid on things and look, here's the thing. The reason you have relationships with people so you can confirm things. And if Otani didn't want out there, no team. So that made it difficult. Um, but so the answer to your first question, that was kind of like the Carissa Thompson thing. I do think there's a re secondhand reality where people start gonna, and also there's a feeling like when you're on X sometimes for people, I got to chime in on this issue. Okay. And I do think like, if you're, again, we don't have to get into that topic, but when you're like sideline reporters, I can understand wanting to chime in on that because it's very personal for you, but you don't need to chime in on, we don't all need to chime in on everything. Like I'm trying to get off of X as much as possible. And also just like not chime in on stuff that is not really in my uh, wheelhouse. Like every once in a while I got a tweet about to send it. And I'm like, why, why am I going to tweet about the Yankees? I just think if you're a reporter going after John Morosi, you better have never gotten anything wrong before. Like what I, here's what I don't like about it. I guess I don't like when there's the implication from forget wackos on Twitter who are just fans. I'm talking about reporters. I don't like the implication that like Morosi made this up. Like Morosi was like, oh, I'm just going to say he's like, yeah, he, he, got, bad he, got, he got, got bad, bad information. information. And, and that's happened to every reporter who does these stories. Uh, maybe not every, but what did you say? 80%, 90%? I mean, yeah, everyone has look, gotten a story wrong. Yeah, well, but the thing is, I think the problem with Twitter and X and how we like report things now, and we see it with bigger issues like war, is that journalism and, and getting stories correct, they're not always two seconds. So you can't like I get it. There's pressure yeah. to put things together in two seconds like that Cano story I told you about. There is pressure to get this going because this is going to fuel the day and it's going to be on Sports Center. And at that point, Colin Coward's on. Uh, I think I was on Spanning the Globe with him on that you know day. Um, and like so, there is that. What the hell is Spanning the Globe? He used to do a thing at ten twenty every day where he uh, oh. he like would go to different people. Never there's heard nothing. Of it. It was at ESPN. What you, you never listened to? Did you ever listen to Cowherd? No. Okay. No. Well, um, <laughs> I mean, the, why? Why so upset? Is it was a segment called Spanning the Globe? I don't understand. Yeah, I didn't know what it. I didn't know what you were. I thought it was a show when you said it. I didn't oh, know no, it was no, a no. segment. It was like a ten twenties to go around and go to different cities. I was like, I like. never heard of that show before, but okay, yeah, yeah. Th that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and, and my old, and again, at the end of the day, when all was said and done, like a guy said, a guy was going to sign with one team and he signed with another. Well, we'll live. If you're, we'll be fine. I get it. I could see a fan being upset. And the other thing is, all we have as reporters is our reputation. So, yeah, you're you're right. right. You know, um, people make mistakes, but it, you know, it hurts Morosi's reputation. It's the I biggest agree. free agent maybe in the history of baseball. And you got to get that element wrong where and here's the problem for me, like forgetting that it's wrong is this you're putting this you're putting out that he's going. Let's say he was on the plane. Maybe he was going on the plane. Supposedly he'd gone to the Dunedin to see the Blue Jays uh, spring training. home. Maybe he went to go look at Toronto again. I mean, there's a many reasons if he were actually on that plane, besides that he's just signing there, that he was going to Toronto. Um, right. And so that's the thing you need to find out um, about. Got you can't it. just tell us he's flying someplace. I mean, that can mean anything. Yeah. I get it. You want I, that story. But eh, I, I thought Morosi deserved blame. Okay. Let me hear you a couple other things here. McAfee, I, I, he made a thing like he might leave game day. Then he said he wasn't leaving game day. He was never going to leave game day, right? I mean, he leaves most of his deals early. So, I mean, it's not like out of the question that he might leave game day early. Um, but... I, mean, I thought the more interesting one was Herb Street saying that if McAfee leaves, he's going to leave. Right. I that was. Like I was going to go. Yeah. I think that was. I think that was. Um, well, let's Kirk hold the, good, right, good we'll, radio. We'll, we'll, we'll write that one down. If McAfee yeah. leaves next year, if Kirk's going to fo follow him um, around, or maybe I got a feeling he'll uh, stay. Yeah, I think Kirk was just trying to be nice. Yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I don't know. McAfee. McAfee does what he wants. Um, and. And he's very cognizant of what everyone says and writes about him. Very interested in that. That's why he loves you. Well, I don't, I mean, I just think, why would he leave after two seasons? The ratings are good, despite, you know, Fox playing their games there with like 12, 15 and trying to say they won when they really didn't and all that. Like the ratings for game day are still great. Like there's no reason for McAfee to leave. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, that's the only yeah. thing I would say. He's, you know, well, five days a week, you're doing a talk show and then you're traveling that's on true. Fridays. That's to do true. Your show there. Yeah. And then, I mean, he probably is anything private everywhere, but he, uh, it's a lot. I mean, and then you got to yeah, watch the NFL games. I'm not saying like, look, I always get, I always say like, nobody cares about these sportscasters or sports personalities schedule. I mean, they're talking about, no, he works hard. I mean, that he guy works hard. hard. Yeah, he works hard. He works hard. You, yeah. He works hard for yeah, sure. Yeah. I, and that's the thing with Herb Street. I mean, if anything, Herb Street should give up the game that he's doing on Saturday. Like Herb Street should never leave college game day. Kirk Herb Street should never leave college game day. He's better off not doing the Saturday night game with Fowler and staying on game day. I mean, most people like doing the games better. Right. Well, he, I'm saying keep the Thursday night. Am I mean, Kirk, forget like I think forget take out work hard. Herb Street's schedule is ridiculous. You can't keep that up for like a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. I mean, it is hard. I again, I mean, because they make him fly from game day. Well, like, that's in yeah, that's Alabama. what I think he does. That's it. what I'm yeah. talking about. That yeah. one's yeah, that one's crazy. I, like I wouldn't personally. I don't know how great it is to be on a right. plane that much in that short. That's of time. that's my point. Is when he's that's doing game day in Alabama play. and he's got to fly to USC for that game at eight o'clock, and then like, what's the point? Like, give it up already. Well, have him on and tell him. I don't yeah. have to tell you. I will. <laughs> I will. He's not easy to get on. He's more one of the harder ones to get on. Yeah. He's on McAfee every day, but. Yeah, he's on McAfee. He, likes, he definitely yeah. likes Pat McAfee. Um, I feel like I was going to bring this up earlier, and then we went in a different direction, but we'll go back NFL. I, I feel like the heat on Romo has gone down down a little bit this year i think that he still has some vocal critics but i don't feel like it's as intense as it was last year am i reading that wrong i think they'll be judged by the playoffs in the super bowl i think that when you look at the uh number one teams for fox and cbs i think they get a little lost on a sunday between multiple games red zone um, Sunday ticket for like your most ardent fans like you and I who probably care about the broadcasters more than others. Uh, and um, and it's just like there's a lot fantasy. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, when they're in their standalone games, that's where they're judged more. But yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I think this time of year, you're not going to hear as much. But if you look, 
or do a search on his name generally. There's usually something going on in those broadcasts. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, yeah. But like you said, that, that's Twitter. I mean, that's going to be. Yeah, Twitter is negative. Twitter, you can't right. go by Twitter. I mean, right. I, every story I write usually gets like in the Twitter verse and is like somehow, mis- you know, is not re aggregated or, you know, correct, fully correct. The I know the NBA, their whole thing right now is, you know, they're going to get new rights deals and, you know, who know Apple, Amazon, NBC, all that stuff. And I know the in-season tournament final with the Lakers did a huge rating for a regular season game. But I find it weird they're trying to spin the whole tournament as this big success because instead of like a million viewers for a Tuesday game, they got like two million viewers for a Tuesday game. And then it's like, oh, this thing's a success. Everyone's watching it. It didn't seem like anybody cared about this. I know the final did five million with the Lakers, but everything before the final, like I know the ratings are up like a tick, but like. Apple's going to pay a billion dollars to get the in-season tournament because they're going to get 2 million viewers instead of 1 million. Like, how did you overall view the in-season tournament as a rating success or not success? Well, or- ratings, I mean, well, first of all, I think your numbers are a little high on where you're going from 1 to 2. I think that would be actually right. really good if it was yeah. if it was that. I think it was more like 1 to 1.5 maybe. Yeah, uh, maybe, a mean, maybe a little bit higher. Maybe a little bit higher. But uh, I thought I think it's a success. I'll tell you why. Why? Think- yeah, tell me Wait. why. Number one is that everyone wants like this to be the NBA finals the first year. It's not going to be the NBA finals the first year. These things grow in importance. So it's not like you, you start out and you start something new and everyone's going to be like, wow, this is the greatest thing ever. Do I think they infuse the little life in the early part of the season? I do. Um, I think Based the, on the, what? I think those games are interesting. Oh, okay. Okay, and I think they were playing for something on that Saturday night. Um, I think, I think, I think there's probably. Are you're not a soccer guy, right? No. So I think there are people who like soccer, and Adam Silver's talked about this a number of times because they they took the idea from soccer. These this is very normal in soccer. Now, the way their system works, these tournaments work even better for what they do because there's no playoffs. Um, you know, in uh, in their regular seasons for each league. So that makes it so like there's 40 games and makes every regular season game like a playoff game um, because you only have 40 games, kind of like college football. So it's a better system um, in that regard, but no playoffs um, for like Premier League. Uh, they have Champions League that you qualify for, which is more of a tournament, which is like kind of like uh, how the in-season tournament is. But then they have a, a bunch of competitions and they're important in their own ways, um, but they're not there. There's levels of importance. So will this level be like the finals, the NBA finals or the NBA playoffs? No. But does it um, give you something to look forward to? Do the players care more about it? Did you not have guys sitting out? I think the issue that they run into now, you're saying it's not a success. I'm going to say it is a success. But here's the flip side. Hey, hey, that. Well, no, no, if I say it's not a success, someone's going to go, oh, they got 1.5 instead of one. They're, they're... Oh, well, who cares about? Yeah, I mean. But I'm but saying t- success, something. nobody cared. Nobody cared about the NC. There was no buzz for the Saturday night. I got it. It was the Lakers. They got, that's the other thing. They got very lucky. They, they got the Lakers in there Yeah, that was for good. the final. That was good. That was, um, that, that was like David Stern style. Get that going. They got very, yeah. That, yeah. I don't know how that worked out for them very well, but like. A little uh, freezer on that. There, was, I, there wasn't I'm anyone being like, I got to get. The Patrick Ewing uh, envelope. I'm glad for that. Patrick's my all time favorite NBA player. Um, that's a no joke. No one was saying like way. I got to get home Tuesday night to watch the in season tournament. Like there was no buzz for that. But it's the first year. Do you think there's buzz for the WBC? No. Oh God, no. no. Okay, but no. if you went to other countries, maybe not domestically. I'm not other- in other countries. I'm here. Nobody cares. But, here. but it matters though. Not here. It didn't matter as much here, but it. Right. But as you go on. And as they kind of, if they ever were like change the system, maybe in spring training, you have the play in rounds and then you made the final four at the all-star break. It, it, it's, it's something. I, here's the thing. I'm never going to see that side of it. As long as you have an NBA finals in a world series, I don't understand why I'm supposed to care about anything else. Yeah. I mean, again, this is like the divide that if you were like a soccer person, you would understand this, but you're so, not. Oh no! Okay, but okay, but let's put this in baseball since I'm a diehard Yankee fan. Yeah, it would be impossible for me to give two shits less if the Yankees won an in-season tournament. I care about one thing and one thing only: 
win the World Series. We know that's not happening as long as Brian Cashman's around, but that's a whole other story. Uh, why would I care? I don't understand. If I'm a Yankee fan, we want to win the World Series. Why would I care about an in-season tour? I just don't understand why I would care. This is like, so let's say Jimmy Trainer was eight years old, right? Oh, right? with the hypotheticals. I got to be in another country. I got to be eight years old. What else do I have to do to care about this? Because you're not the only about, person. We got to say no flags because you got to bet on the Steelers. I mean, that's correct. like how it works. Well, no, but way. but but every gambler is going to agree with me. The non-gamblers will agree with you. The gamblers will agree with me. Okay. Well, the gamblers could probably figure out it. They don't say there's a flag. There's no flag. Here's the thing, though. You're eight years old. You're watching. They can't get you to watch games. You're on TikTok, and you're getting all your misinformation, right. everything on TikTok, and you're that's where you watch, and you get all your highlights. You sit down for a game on a Saturday, 8 o'clock, and you're a Laker or a Pacer fan. They play the Pacers. Um, yeah. the, and you're into it. You do that for the next 15 years. Now you're 23. You're into the in-season tournament. Like you want yeah. it to be, you're like Oran. He's the same way. He wants everything, boom, right away to be like perfect. You, they're growing it. Uh, well, now I, I didn't know that. So now if Oran agrees with me, it's two against one. We win. And you, Not on like, this. No, he, he's like because, here's why, other... because when the eight-year-old, when the eight-year-old develops a brain, the eight-year-old is going to say to him or herself, oh, wait, there's an NBA finals. Why do I give a shit about an in-season tournament? This is what matters. That's what an eight-year-old is no, going to say when they can, when no, they get a bra I, I, I some brain development. I don't argue that the NBA finals is that the in-season tournament is more important than the NBA finals. Nobody is arguing that it's year one, but that it brings it infuses something else into the regular season is a good thing. The problem is now you go back to it, the regular it, season. It makes the regular season this the regular regular season even more like an exhibition. It infused things for one night. One night. Yeah. I mean, I think the group. The playing, look, I'm not a, like, I, I'm a huge basketball guy, but regular season, you know, I put it on. I can't, like, I'm not sitting there every night for, you know, basket, you know, fourth quarter, get in there, in and out. I like to look, you know, I honestly look at it from the broadcasting side a lot. Let me take it. Let me listen to this person for a little bit. But that was, not, I mean, like, and how about the desperation of the NBA to make TNT and ESPN do crossover stuff? Oh my God. They don't do that for the NBA finals. They're going to do that. They, they won't let, they won't let Dick Vitale call a tournament game on CBS, but let's cross over MB, M ESPN and NBA TNT for the bigger. in season tournament that nobody Here's a good cares one, about. The what? Like, like the um, studio stuff I thought was good. The game stuff. I didn't really understand. Like I, Doc Rivers has done yeah. four games for ABC. Yeah. Now he's doing a game for Turner. Nobody, you think the average person knows that he's on ABC or ESPN? Yeah, because so that didn't make any sense. If I was TNT and they want, they, they wanted to cross over, I'd be like, why? We're a million times better than your yeah, show. No, no, why would we say, cross over? I with actually you? was going to put that in my newsletter on Monday, and then I didn't. But uh, yeah. Uh, All right, so we yeah, have an it, agreement it, it, there. It lifted up ESPN's pregame more than it, it that for sure. It made them <laughs> seem course. really helpful for ESPN's pregame. Um, of course. And so that was good to, to be associated with Barkley and company. But the game stuff, the thing is that who, you know, I know like they had like a conference call with the Turner people, the ESPN people, the NBA people. They're all very happy about it. But what they don't, and this is a problem more ESPN fundamentally don't understand about where, where I was talking about games. The biggest thing you want is continuity and to the longer you work together. And if these are important games to throw Reggie Miller with Mike Breen and Doris Burke is not really the best strategy. Now, Reggie is good to work with and gets in and out. So he's a good guy to do that, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult to just have a new, and the, that doesn't make sense. It would have been, right. I, I wouldn't have done the, the, the game. Well, stuff. it makes sense because you know why? The in-season tournament was a gimmick, so they did the broadcast booths. That broadcast booths is a gimmick, did and that's all you need to know. It? No, no, it had not. I would watch a game, and they'd be like, "This is an in-season tour." I'm like, "The court would be different." I didn't know what's going. Like, I didn't. It took me like two weeks to figure out that they did them on Tuesdays and Fridays. Like, I didn't know what next year you'll be on when it first when it first started. I'm talking about, and then no, know, Saturday next year night, you'll be. But then year two, you see, there's like. Again, like I try to tell Warren this, Warren this year two, you'll know more. You'll know, you know, early season. No, I'm, I'm not paying attention to this. I don't care. I only I just the finals. That the year didn't one, you and, again, you got you want it to be like come out sprinting. It comes out. It, it had a pretty good pace. I think it did well. 
I think it was something to build on. I think it was a smart idea. They need to juice up the regular season. They need more spectacle. And what they really need to do is. But you said it yourself before. They juiced it from 1 million to 1 point. So you think next year for the in season tournament, those early games, they'll do better than 1.5 million? I don't know. Um, That's not my thing. I don't really care about that. Exactly. But no, but the thing that's not, I don't think it's going to do a, it, it's better. It's more interesting. They're juicing up these games. The issue with, for all these, the outside the NFL, the other three, um, that the traditional, uh, top four sports, uh, baseball, basketball, hockey is they have tonnage and that they don't have scarcity. The NFL has scarcity. So there's less games, which makes them more valuable. What the NBA would be better off with is if they didn't have an 82 game schedule, but instead had like a 50 to 60 game schedule and they'd make everything bigger. Now they're not going to do it because the owners and players are going to not want to give up any money in the short term, but long term, I would argue you, even if you went, let's say you went 50 games and then just made this like a separate tournament, didn't count for the regular season. That would probably be better because then you have this tournament and now there's only 50 games. It's a sprint to the playoffs. Start the playoffs earlier, make it so they don't take 18 months to play the playoffs. Cause there's another issue that just, they take way too long and the games are, there's too much. I get it. They want to be on certain nights for TV. There's it's way too spread out for like an average fan. to. Here's what they should have done. If they would have, here's, here's what would have made me pay attention or what could I, if you win the in season tournament, you should be guaranteed a playoff berth. No matter yeah, what like your record that. is. Then I would pay attention. Then there's something on the line. Here's the point. What were these people playing for? Cash, right? Yeah, got a half a million each. Right. So why do I care about that? That doesn't. Yeah, I'm, maybe they'll I, do that. Maybe if you're a fan of a team, you want your said. team to. Right. I think I like the so wait, playoffs. So if I'm a Laker fan, if I'm a Laker fan, I'm over there fist pumping and getting all excited because Austin Reeves got half a million dollars. What? Who? Why LeBron, would I give a shit? LeBron needs that money. He needs that half. Oh. Million. I hope LeBron would give that money away, but. Who knows? Maybe he did, but th- like that's what I'm saying. What's the incentive? I don't get. That's what I don't get. But I don't want. We've argued way too much on this podcast. Yeah, it's been a big way too much podcast. What do we? Anything we agree on? Was give me a topic. Uh, what could we agree well. on? I didn't sleep well last night, so cranky. So like, you got me a cranky. But probably, what I think we, probably that's good for us. What? I'm what trying to think. Agree. Topic. Is there a topic we can agree on? I'll say this. What is the point in Thursday night football having flex? When you need 28 days notice, can we maybe knock it down to 14 days so we're not stuck with Raiders chargers? I mean, it's honestly, that one's a ridiculous flex. You can't, the people who are traveling for those games, I know that nobody cares and you'll probably argue no. you don't care about people traveling to a game. I don't. But to go from Sunday to Thursday is crazy. Come on. Then, then, then say there's no flex for Thursday. Like, well, they, they, like, I would say this: they didn't do it. How are they ever going to flex a game if they need 28 days? Notice? Well, you get a you get a year where, let's say the Jets their late season game and Aaron Rodgers gets hurt and they end up they're two and ten and you are 28 days out and you could do it. All right. Since you mentioned the Jets, let's end it on this. This is for the New York people out there. The other people are going to get annoyed. But I don't care. I'm getting the vibe. You tell me if I'm if I'm wrong. I'm getting the vibe that the New York media, they're getting ready to turn on Aaron Rodgers. I don't think the New York media likes that he's so chatty when he hasn't played the whole season. Uh, I actually do want to talk to you about something else, though. I got it because I want you to. Have you done your segment with Sal yet? No, not yet. Okay, so I got time for you. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know. You're okay. I disagree. Okay, that's fine. Okay, Um, that's fine. Tommy DeVito of the Giants. Yeah. Now, Canton, is he going, how many Hall of Fames are we putting him in? Like, I want yesterday, this is, we're doing this on, we're taping here on Wednesday, on Tuesday. Right. I right. listened to a good amount of FAN, or maybe even Monday, maybe it was Monday. Right. Um, how, how much, um, it, I would love for that FAN to be in a time capsule for three years from now when Tommy DeVito. Maybe he's starting quarterback and he's Tom Brady, but maybe he's out of the league. Uh, but if you listen to WFAN, it is if they just got the. This is the greatest court. This is Peyton Manning with a is, with a, with heroes. Is, is that more of like the New York football season has been a waste, and they finally have something to discuss, and that's why they're going overboard on it? Like I don't know. Like I, I would don't. say it's complete. It's a 
I don't know. It just shows you sports radio. I mean, like they'd rather have him than Daniel Jones. Can we let him play 20 games before we well, decide how good didn't he is? a reporter, a reporter as day ball comparing him to Brady. Is that, that happened yesterday? I, yeah, I didn't, I saw the headline. I don't see who that was. Right. Yeah. Now yeah. Bob Nightingale wrote a comment about that. Now that's a ridiculous question. Now I'd have to hear the question. I didn't hear the full right. question, but yeah, I wouldn't compare him to Tom. Look, like, can we, what did he throw for? Did he throw for 200 yards the other day? No, he threw for 300, I think. 300? Oh, no, 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 no. That was Zach Wilson. That was Zach Wilson. Yeah, Zach Wilson threw for 300. I don't yeah. think he threw for, because yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I didn't see his final stats, but late in the game, I think he was less, in fewer than 200 yards. So, anyways, it's a great story. Um, it's fun. I, th- here's what I would say in defense great of back the fan. Pages, but, yeah. What else are they supposed to talk about right now? No, no, I'm not saying that, but like, yeah, can yeah. we have a little bit of reason? Involved. Like Dave Rothenberg on ESPN well, New York said, yeah, I don't think he's going to be a starting quarterback forever. He's the only one. Everyone else, should, like ask your boy Sal. He's got him in the, he's got, he's better than Danny Dimes. He's better than Daniel Jones. Oh, I see what you're they, saying. Like, they right, just so in I'll, the I'll, moment, like that Mike White was the greatest quarterback. Go listen right. back to Mike White after he played well. They had him as the greatest quarterback ever. Right, I mean, right, right. Just have, can we just like remember like one thing from like a year ago that like maybe, like he might be, like, like I'm not saying he won't be. I'm just saying that if you listen to sports radio, it is unbelievable how great they uh, um, think he is. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. I just... I take it all with a grain of salt with that because I just, you know, I'm not expecting. I would have, I would expect that more than the opposite. I mean, listen, I what they, what the media did here in New York when the Jets got Aaron Rodgers, I still can't get over that. The guy's 40 years old, didn't yeah, play well last year, and they acted like the Jets were not just going to like make the playoffs, but the Jets were like going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, look, I without seeing be, one, without seeing one play. Well, I mean, if you look at the Jets this year, if they had a healthy Aaron Rodgers, they're definitely a playoff team. Definitely, maybe they got a very good defense. They have a very good defense. They have an awful offensive coordinator and no offensive weapons. Know, the well, they have Garrett Wilson. They have Garrett. Well, it is. I I know Aaron Rodgers takes them. But, but he, but Aaron Rodgers was forty years old. Like you don't know he's going to come in so and I agree with light you. it up. I, that's. You don't look, know. That's I, my I point. I'm look, not saying he. W- I'm not saying he wouldn't. I'm saying you don't know. But you, look, they if they had credible quarterbacking, these first like you know before you know Zach Wilson had a good game last Sunday, but they have an okay record right now. They're definitely in playoff connect, connect uh, contention, and I think that you'd have to figure Rodgers could at least be okay. Maybe yeah, not I Aaron Rodgers, yeah. prime Aaron Rodgers. So I, I don't think that's a fair criticism. Okay. So I've right. been wrong on basically everything. I'm not going to argue with you. It's Christmas. It's New Year's. It's Hanukkah. I appreciate you coming on. We disagree. You want to say I'm wrong? The listeners, the listeners will let me know. They always All right. do. All on right. This podcast, Thanks, Andrew. Last thing on this podcast: no flags. That's the way it should be done. Now I can celebrate. Now I can ce- confirmation to celebrate. See you, my man. Thanks, Happy Andrew. Always. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right, joining me now, as he does every week, for our Train of Thoughts segment from WFAN Radio in New York, SNY TV in New York, my good buddy Sal Akata. Sal, how are we doing? Great. I'm excited for the Christmas holiday and the New Year and all. I can't wait to have well, that nice little break to end the year. You may be excited, but you may not like this, I have to tell you. I just had Andrew Marshan on, and he wanted me to, he's like, you got to ask Sal, Did you have you talked to Sal yet? I said, no. He's like... Ask Sal, and he basically called you out for saying that, like, and I, so I'm going to give you the chance to defend yourself. He's like, tell Sal to take it easy about Tommy DeVito basically being in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know, I, it's funny because I saw his tweet yesterday, and I was like, I, I don't believe he's referring to anything that I said because he said something like, oh, WFAN basically has Tommy DeVito in the Hall of Fame. What I would volley back to Andrew is to say, like, were you actually listening to what I said? Not once did Hall of Fame and Tommy DeVito ever come out of my mouth. All I said was that I believe he's better. Now, I didn't say this on the air because I can't say it on radio, but I could say it here. I believe he's better than the shit quarterbacks in New York outside of Aaron Rodgers. That well, includes Zach he, Wilson yeah. and Daniel Jones. That's all that I'm that, saying. Yeah, he said that you said he was better than Daniel Jones, and it's only been four games. Yeah. Yes. Then right, what so is Daniel got- Jones on? 
Like, it's been I, five years of up and down. Last year, in a year where he took his team to the playoffs and won a playoff game, he threw 15 touchdowns. 15 touchdowns for an NFL quarterback in the 2023 season or 2022, whatever year. That's like, that's an embarrassment. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, to me, like, I, I can't form any opinion on Tommy DeVito yet, but that's just me. But I will say this I have been, I have been just in my head. For two weeks, I have been wanting to discuss this topic. And for a split second, I thought about putting it on Twitter. And I'm like, what am I, insane? And I would never put this on Twitter. Then I'm like, oh, I'll discuss it in the pod. And I think last week, I was like, I just, I don't want to deal with this. Because I really don't want to do this. But I heard you talking about it on your fan show today. Mm. And I could not believe what you were saying. Because I felt like I've been on another planet the last two or three weeks. So I'll just... Let me lay this out as clearly as possible, even though I know people are going to misinterpret it and then say stupid things to me. I am not offended in any way, shape, or form by anything that's going on with Tommy DeVito. I don't get offended by anything like that. That's just the way I... The only thing that offends me is if someone I like says something bad about me. I really don't care if you say I'm fat or I'm Italian. I, I don't care. I'm not upset. I'm not angered. It's an observation. That's all this is, is an observation. That fascinates me. It is amazing that in this day and age where you can't say anything about anyone, where everyone is so overly politically correct, it's ridiculous. No one's allowed to have fun. But let's just roll out every stereotype known to man and use... Things that I would not expect people could still use about Tommy DeVito. And I, I feel like I've been on a plane. And I said, I'm not bringing this up because I know right away people are going to be like, why are you offended? You're so sensitive. You're this. I'm not offended. I could not possibly care less what you call him or me. I am just making the observation that if he was any other nationality, none of these references would fly. And now it's like, open season on this and i have and then i'm like i must be on another planet because i've not heard one person say this and then i heard you saying it today and i'm like oh my god we haven't even discussed this and right. i would on this i i think i said this to one other person i'm like am i missing something here and they're like yeah it's kind of crazy i'm like yeah uh, that's what i'm thinking and i and i know what people want like people are waiting for me to say if he was this nationality you couldn't say this word if he was this you couldn't say i and i'm not playing that game i'm just saying it's crazy to me that for him, there's no rules and everyone's just letting it fly. It, I, as I said before, I'm with you exactly on this where oh yeah, I said this on the radio. I'm not offended. I don't give a fuck. I've never been offended by any of that stuff. People used to be like, oh, The Sopranos is a bad look. I was proud of The Sopranos show. So like, I don't get offended by any of the stereotypes. I don't care. What offends me is the double standard. Because, as you said, if this were about any other ethnicity, race, whatever it may be, and you use stereotypes, you'd be fucking canceled in two seconds. But yet with this, it's okay. So I'm not offended by the Italian stuff. I'm offended that we, as Italians, can't say other shit. Not that I even want to or care, but it just the double standard is that's what, what is offensive. Yeah, I I don't even, I mean... I don't even know if I'm if I'd even go double standard. I'm just well. How is it not though? There like, seems, why is it? It there just seems to like. I'm just amazed people are just letting it all fly. Like, you know, there was this controversy because Peyton or Eli or both of them called the agent slimy during the Manning cast. And then the agent went on your station on the Boomer and Geo yeah. show on the fan. He was not happy. He's like, my nickname has never been slimy. I don't know where that came from, you know, and I had posted on Twitter that the agent was not thrilled that Peyton and Eli called him slimy. You should have seen the responses I got. What? Saying that uh, um, more negative to him? The He'll parade around on national TV with a pinstripe suit and hat like he's from central casting from The Godfather. He's embarrassing. 
Yeah, but maybe, you, maybe the agent Twitter. shouldn't have just like Uncle Junior from The Sopranos. Would he prefer being called a greaseball? I mean, the Pete the Manning agent forgot to it. display his gold horn chain when he was on the phone. Right. So any that's what I'm saying, like the double standard. Like that's what I mean. If you say if you say the equivalent of that about any other background, you're fucked. So why is that okay? Now again, these are idiots on Twitter, but people are actually saying this. Like Peyton Manning called him slimy. Like right. I don't. If that's I don't, not an. You know, I don't know. Whatever. It, I is it I, maybe it's because Italians don't care and there's no like like no Probably. one's saying they're outraged by it. So like. I don't know. I also, I also, believe, like, I don't care. Me neither. So maybe the majority of Italians don't care. And maybe some are even embracing it and having fun with it. And DeVito seems to be doing that himself. Right. However, if you think that it is not in at least some way, shape, or form, people having fun with it and making fun of it, you're just ignorant. Like they are. Now, I don't care. I'm not offended, but that's the truth. And you can't do that with any other. If you did it with any other ethnicity, it, it would be a problem. That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering, I, what I would love to know, is there another nationality where, you know, you give the guy a nickname of, like, some food from that? Na- like, yeah, yeah, like, Tommy Cullets is not offensive. It's not, it's, I, I mean, but, I don't know. I, uh, the, I just you, see. I know what you're thinking. You, you, and you're right. Like, you can't, even if you said something else, which wouldn't be offensive, but people be like, oh, my God, how could you say that? Whatever cuisine it may be. If you associate that cuisine with the ethnicity of that player and reference right. it, it's, yeah, it's like you can't right. do it. And here's, I think, I think what's surprising to me is, all, it's, is that everyone is so public in how they're discussing him. Now, the truth of the matter is I think a lot of us in private with our friends will say things. You know, I have friends who make mafia jokes to me because I'm Italian. They right. would never do it publicly because they get in trouble. But privately, they'll do it. We'll laugh. It's fine. Whatever. Sure. What's surprising to me is that this is so public with people just like using all of the stereotypes. When I, I was like, I, think about this. Listen, uh, think I'm going to tell you. A, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say quickly. Think about this. There's an episode of The Office, season one. I think it's episode two, Diversity Day. That Comedy Central... Comedy Central of all networks. We're not talking about like Disney, whatever, family. Comedy Central won't show it because of the stereotype humor that's in right. that episode. But right. Everyone's just and like... Even, you want, and this is okay. I'm going to tell you a quick story, and this is true. And again, I'm not offended. I don't care, but this actually happened. Last week, I agreed to do some podcast from somebody on Twitter that happened to be a fan. He called me in a spot where I saw a tweet and was like, all right, you know what? Let me do nice because this guy was complimenting me. Whatever it was. He was this is a whole show. other topic. I know. But he asked me to go on. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going right. to reward nice people on Twitter. Right. So I'm doing the podcast. And like I'm, the phone was cutting out, whatever it was, the, the thing that he was using. And he thought that I couldn't hear or see him. But yet I, I could hear him and see him. He couldn't see me. And he, who was not Italian, what must have had like some of his friends also on the thing, and like couldn't believe that I was on with him, and started going, "Oh, we, you know, Tommy DeVito, we lost out." Like, like he was, he was mocking using the DeVito stuff, and like mocking me in a way, I guess, for being a like. I, I don't think he meant any harm by it, but it was a clear like. And I'm like, bro, like I could hear everything you're saying just then. Anyway, he got embarrassed. I finished the thing, but I was I was obviously like, I'm taking the time out right. to talk to you where nobody's right. gonna even listen to this fucking thing. I got no time to begin with. I'm not even calling my wife and I'm doing this for you. And that's what you're gonna do. Like, so there is a like people are making fun of it. Make no mistake. And they're doing it to your point. Well out in public. Well, that's it, right. That's it, right. And also, like, I think there's a like, okay, they call him Tommy Cutlets and they want to say the agents dress like Uncle Junior. But what that guy did to you is mocking you. Like that's that's well, an even he but he was he wasn't doing it just to me. It was like a playoff of DeVito. Like he wanted to talk about DeVito and it was right. like a funny thing for him and his friends to do the oh, you know, whatever. And like again, I'm not offended, but like he's doing it because I'm Italian and because 
that's like the thing. Right. Like it was obvious what was going but on. But even 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 if I saw people, if people like using Italian slurs against Danny against Tommy DeVito, I wouldn't be offended because I just don't care. Same. I'm just Same. fascinated that it's just completely allowed, no questions asked. And I is there any other group where that's just like everyone's just laughing it up? And I'm like, what? Wait, wait. That, what's going on here? Guess what? We're not going to find out because, like, we're, we're not going to test that because no. we know. Well, what here's what'll happen: when he comes back down to earth, and then it's over for him, then it'll all go away. But you know, right? Well, yeah, but still, I mean, I just I can't. I hate. I don't even like the fact that they tie in the story that he's a local kid. Like, I understand why it's a story. For me, I don't give a shit where he comes from, what his background is, who he lives with, what he's eating. Can you play? Yes or well, no? Basketball, football. I don't give a shit what the sport is. Are you good or not? Well, That's, I mean, me, the, the fact that he lives with his parents, I could see why people are into that aspect of it because he's a professional athlete. So, like, it's just so rare. Right, Number but two, ultimately, it doesn't matter. Listen, really, you know. I'm with you, but I think we're in the minority. Like, like here, for example, maybe you, I, I, we've never discussed this. I don't know. Like I remember people from Long Island thought like it was so great that Craig Biggio was in the major leagues because he was from Long Island. I was like, what do I care if he's from Long Island? Like, yeah, it's the same thing. Kings like, Park, right? I think has, he was from, like, yeah, like I don't it care. Was a, like yeah, it was a thing growing up. You knew about it, but I didn't give a shit about that. Right, like my myself. favorite athletes of all time are like Jeter, Mattingly, and Ewing. I don't really care where they're from. Right. That's exactly right. I use that but, example. But we're in the here. minority on that. I think we're in the minority on that. I think a lot well, of people get it. They're like, oh, hometown hero. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Just go win a World Series. Yeah, that's exactly right. Don't care if he's Italian, hometown. doesn't right. matter what he is. I, just give me some wins. Yeah, I, I don't have any of that pride stuff. I don't care about right. the Olympics. I'm like, don't you want to see USA win? I'm like, I don't care. I just, right. I, can't pay. I don't care. I don't care for them from Long Island. I don't care. I right. want the Yankees to win the World Series and I want to win my bets. I don't care where people are from, my hometown, <laughs> USA. I don't matter. I don't care. So true. Here's what offends me. I'll tell you what offends me because I texted this to you. I could not believe that the first Sunday of the NFL season where I was not at home with my YouTube, my beautiful YouTube TV, my glorious, beautiful Sunday ticket. I go to a sports bar. Now, the bars still have Sunday ticket through DirecTV. They don't have it through YouTube TV. And the DirecTV was out for like a half an hour in the sports bar because it was raining. It made me realize that DirecTV is still the worst of all time. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't believe that you had that experience. That was brutal. My God. I didn't even know. And I honestly didn't know DirecTV still had it, even in bars. DirecTV has Sunday ticket for bars and restaurants because yeah. it's not on YouTube TV. It rained here in New York. It was, it was heavy rain and wind on Sunday. And in the sports bar, every, t every single TV had the message about DirecTV services out for like a half hour. The TVs, there were TVs working that were on the local. The sports bar must have cable for the local channels because the jet game on local CBS was on. So to make matters worse, all the games were out and the jet game was on. I mean, it was just painful. I remember I remember one snowy day, Falcons Colts. I'm trying to watch it on direct TV, Sunday ticket. This is years ago, over 20 years ago. And the signal comes up, can't see the game. I was outside trying to get... I used a broom to try to wipe off. I'm on like some chair with a broom and half my jacket on trying to wipe the fucking snow off the dish so I could watch the game. I, I, I mean, I don't know how I, ha I had direct TV for 20 years only because of Sunday ticket. All I have to say is God bless Verizon Fios. God bless him. <laughs> I've ever, the, the Verizon Fios has never gone out for one split second since I've had them the, the last four years. No, the only, time, the only time we had an issue was when you came over my house this year. Well, that was that was YouTube. You got off. Yeah, the that's what I'm saying. Yeah, with yeah. the new. All oh, right, right. No files, but the YouTube stuff. Even that has been. I can't believe how on point their streaming has been for the most part. I'd say 99 percent of the year. Yeah. Um. What's going on with the house? Oh God, I, I can't. I can't even. What was the? What's the last thing that? The you last know? thing was you saw one or you saw two and you put in a bid maybe or you yes. wait to hear back. All right, you, you ready for this? No. 
No, it's really, it is like actually pathetic. So we put in an offer. We saw two houses on football Sunday, drove there specifically to see these two, drove back to host some friends, put in an offer. The offer was accepted. Finally, an offer that is accepted. So now what happens is it goes into attorney review. We send the offer. They accept it. Now it's an attorney review. One day goes by, two days go by, and I'm like, what's going on here? Like, isn't this supposed to be a quick thing? Because It's, like when, the, it's like when the refs are reviewing a play in the, for yeah. instant replay. Right. Troy Aikman's right. We the guy, the lawyers are under seconds. the tent. The lawyers yeah, are under right. the tent. Yeah. Well, I'm, now I'm talking to our real estate agent who's talking to their real estate agent, our lawyer saying he, the, there's the holdup because the seller's lawyer is in court all day because he does some other shit. I don't know, whatever it is, process, whatever it is. That he does. So he can't respond. So five days go by and something that should have been done in two days, max takes five days to go by. They send back an offer, which basically says the sale is contingent on the sellers finding a new house. And it was so obvious that it was wrong that even I could see, I didn't even need my lawyer to see it. I was like, what is this? So then we had to then counter and say, no, that's no good. Send it back. And now uh, that, so this is all like taking 10 days when it should take one or two. And here we are now still waiting. And I told them, and my wife's very upset because she likes the house and all that. I said, if we are not in contract, which is by the way, like the first step, if we're not in contract by Thursday, we're done. That's it. But why would you last night? Nothing today. Okay. But listen, if you like the house, you put in the offer, your wife likes the house. Use that as a threat, but don't follow. I mean, don't. No, it's, it's, we're following through because it's more than just that. Like if they can't get their shit together to a point of even getting to contract before we do the inspections and all that other shit where things could fall apart, you can't even get taken 10 days because they have a lawyer that's not making it as priority. So I was going to say, who's at fault here? The people selling the house or the, their lawyer? The, the, well, ultimately, the people who are selling the house have the ability to hire another lawyer, which has been pitched to them and suggested to them to do so they don't blow up the sale. So, like, it's on them. Do they either sell it or not? You want to sell the house or not, but we're not doing it under the idea that in 30 or 60 days, if you don't find something that you could pull out of the deal, and then we're going to be screwed for, you know, two months. Not so, happening. So if you don't hear anything on Thursday, then what happens? If I don't hear anything, as we film this tonight on Wednesday, if I don't hear anything tonight, because nothing yesterday, again, a full day today, if I don't hear anything tonight, it's over. Um, I don't give a shit what they say. I am going to text the real estate agent tonight and say, tell them that we're no longer interested and we're moving on. And just it starts again from ground zero. You're a tough cookie. Throwing down the gauntlet, laying down the, the law. Reason, the reason why is because I don't believe... If, if they wanted to sell the house, yeah. they would have gotten their shit in right, order. Right, And They're I'm not going to be dragged along any any further, get our hopes up for it. We need to cut ties and move the fuck on. That's Got why. it. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. I know. Terrible. Just terrible. <laughs> Everyone That's playing nice. the games. Do you think? Yeah. All right. Well, you have 230. Well, you got about four or five hours. Maybe where you can hear you- something. You know how fucking annoying it is, refreshing the phone, checking for emails, waiting for texts, and then the worst is my wife, who's always hopeful and positive, and I knew right away something's wrong, because it shouldn't take this long just to get into contract. Right, right. And now she has lost hope, and when she loses hope and she's upset, and I don't know how I'm going to recover from this, now I got another problem on my hands. Which is even more so why I'm telling these people mm-hmm. it's fucking done. Right. Because now you've made it. Yeah. yeah. Now right. you've now you've made my life a problem. Yeah. Now we've got a real problem. Right? Listen, she'll yeah. you'll find another house that you like. I mean I know. you know. I get it. I know. I told her. I'm, but you gotta I'm deal with you know, you gotta deal with, you know. I know. And I'm not good with that. Soothing, I don't have soothing, that. Th- yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I picture you throughout listen, it's just a house, but get over it. Right, and that doesn't mm-hmm. work. Uh, you would think I've learned to adjust the playbook, but I keep calling that same play. Like I just, I don't have. Yeah. I'm not sympathetic in most spots, especially that. I understand your feelings that you would attach the house, and we just have to find a way to move forward. 
it's okay, babe. I'm learning though. I say yeah, I sent her. Oh, I sent her some um, yeah. bullshit, like one of these positive, you yeah. know, ins- inspirational pictures. One hope is lost. Just hope oh some more. Oh my god! Uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. it worked. She writes yeah. back, "Thank you. This means a lot to me. I appreciate that." I'm like, Jesus. Right. This is all- and then you then you write back. I got three NFL games on Saturday. We're not looking <laughs> yeah. for houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll not be looking for houses over the course of the next yeah. two weekends. Playoffs the Saturday coming. schedules have started. Yeah, oh back, pick God. back up in February. Yeah. All right. Well, hang in there. Maybe you'll get a call in the next few hours. All you right. never know. We'll have the update next week. All right, Sal, take go, it easy. We're going to go make some chicken cutlets now. Yeah. yeah. Go have some veal palm and watch The Sopranos. <laughs> Oh, the Gabagool. All right. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Here's the funny part about this. Here's the funny part. Let's see. It's the 13th. In 11 days, I'm going to be on Instagram posting pictures of the fried calamari, the yeah, octopus we- salad, <laughs> all the seven fishes, and the whole big Italian thing. And I'll be like, eh. No, no. All right. All right. Take it easy. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. All right. My thanks to Andrew Marshan and Sal Licata. If you enjoy the episode and you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trana and make sure you also listen to past episodes in case you've missed any. Two podcasts came out last week. We had Seth Rollins from the WWE on an episode. We had Booger McFarlane from ESPN on another episode. Mike Tirico, Ian Eagle, recent guests as well on SI Media with Jimmy Trana. So go into the archives, give those a listen, subscribe to the podcast, rate and review it on Apple as well, please. All right, that wraps it up. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and take care.